Hey there, it's Miss Bell here again, and we are going to be measuring density. Now, when you think of density, sometimes you might think of relative density in relation to water. Um, when you drop an object in water and see if it either sinks to the bottom or floats at the top. However, we're going to be calculating density. And when you find the density of an object, you're going to need to know the mass in grams of that object and its volume, which we measure in either milliliters or centimeters. You'll just need to divide the mass by the volume in order to figure out the object's density. When you're trying to measure the volume of something, um, in science, we have two ways of doing it. One way we can use a measuring tool such as a ruler to measure centimeters. So we would just look at our ruler and we would find centimeters and measure the length, width, height and put those measurements into a formula such as volume equals length times width times height if you're trying to find the volume of let's say a cube or a rectangular prism. Now, what if an object is kind of irregular shaped? Um, let's say this marker. I can't really find the volume of this um, using those types of measurements, so I would need to use a graduated cylinder, which might look something like this, or even kind of smaller, a little bit more detailed, something like this. And I would place water inside the graduated cylinder. I would plop my irregular shaped item inside there and I would see the disbursement of the water and do some calculations. So uh, as a recap, if it's a regular shaped item that I can definitely find the measurements for like a sphere, a cylinder, a cube, a rectangular prism, then I can definitely use a ruler and find my measurement in centimeters squared. But if I have some kind of weirdly shaped, irregular shaped um, items, then I would need to use a graduated cylinder and do those calculations. And my answer is going to be in milliliters versus centimeters cubed. These are the five objects that we're going to be measuring the mass and the volume. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. We don't know what these objects are just yet, but after we figure out all of our calculations with our density, you should have a better grasp with figuring out what those objects are. So here are our five mystery items that we don't know what they are, but we're going to measure their mass in grams using our triple beam balance. So I'll start with number one. First I need to make sure that my pointer is at the zero mark right here. As you can see it's not because not everything is pushed over to the left. All the way at the zeros. So I'm going to push everything all the way to the left so that my ones place is at the zero, my hundreds place in the middle is at the zero, and my tens place in the back is at the zero. It might take me a little while for it to balance out with a triple B balance. You have to be very patient and you have to wait for it to get to zero. If you see it's not at zero, you can come over here to the um, adjust knob right over here and you can adjust it ever so slightly and again wait for it to just be still is it at the zero mark and there we go so we're good to go so I'm going to place my cube right here and it goes all the way down this comes all the way up and so I need to adjust so I'm going to start at the hundreds ah very good and 200 was too much, so I'm going to go back down to 100, and now I'm going to adjust the 10s. 20, 30, too much, so go back down to 20, and now I adjust the 1s. At the 1, around the 2, around the 3, around the 
four. Oh, four might be just what I'm looking for. I need to go a little bit more. Um, let's see. Too much, I think. Two hours later. There, perfect. So I have one, 100. I'm at the 20. I'm at the three and then some. I'm not quite at the four, so I'm in between the three and the four, and that goes to point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, which is the middle, point five, point six, point seven, point eight. So 123.8 grams. The G over here is gonna tell you you're in grams. So let's keep measuring. So when trying to find the volume of an irregular shaped object like my dry erase marker, my pen, maybe my tape dispenser, you're going to have to use a graduated cylinder of the proper size. And right here I have a graduated cylinder and we need to know the starting point of how much water, how much liquid is already in here. So if you look, it goes all the way up to the 30. Now that's 30 milliliters. And then it counts by fives with the big numbers, 30, 35, 40. And then it counts by ones with these little ticks. So this is at 30 milliliters, one more, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 milliliters. So when I drop one of my irregular shaped objects, I'm gonna do my marker. We're going to see the end volume of what it ends at after we drop it in. So this is our beginning, 30 milliliters. When I drop it in like so, there it is. It went all the way up here. That's 41, two, three. I'm at 43 milliliters. So I started at 30. I ended at 43. So to figure out the volume of our marker, you need to know what to do. There's a little bit of a formula that you're going to need to know. First, you're going to need to know the beginning volume. And we started at 30 milliliters. Then we ended our volume at 43 milliliters. As you can see over here, it's 43. So we do some subtraction. We take what we ended with, we subtract what we began with, and then we end up with the volume of our object. So in our case, it's 43 minus 30, and you get 13, and that's the volume of the marker. So now that we know how volume works, let's just fast forward so that we can see all five of those objects being tested and measured for their volume so we can get one step further to finding out the density of our mystery objects.
Now that we've done our measurements for mass and volume, we can go ahead and fill out our grid on the board. In the column for mass, I'm going to make sure to label them with G for grams. With volume, I'm going to make sure to label them with an M and an L for milliliters. And for density, we're going to write G slash ML or grams per milliliters. Now you're going to need to use that formula density equals mass divided by volume. So for number one that would be 123.8 grams divided by 15 milliliters which will give you about 8.25 grams per milliliters. And voila! These are our five items that we've been measuring. We have bronze, iron, maple wood, copper, and aluminum. And right beside them are their actual densities, grams per milliliters. So you can take our calculated densities that we've calculated and you can compare them to this chart and you can see which number is which item.